Welcome to Living English at the Houston Public Library, a 25-lesson language learning program that focuses on how you work, play, and interact with others in your everyday life. Hello, my name is Ryan Bowden from the Houston Public Library. Welcome to Living English at HPL. Today, we're going to be talking about food and groceries. So, a lot of the terms you hear might be very similar to the shopping video if you've already seen that one, but we're going to cover it in a different way. So you might be going to the grocery store to get produce, like these apples. You might be going to get some baked goods at the bakery, or you might be doing a self-checkout, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But right now, let's talk about vocabulary. So there are different types of markets, places where you might get your groceries. Uh, two common ones. One is a farmer's market, which is typically outside. Uh, you'll see fresh food uh, that comes from local farmers. So you may have experience with that. I love the farmer's market, but we're not really going to focus on that today. Today we're going to talk about the supermarket, right? They are large stores with aisles and different choices of food. So let's jump in to our food and grocery lesson, and we're going to focus on supermarkets or grocery stores. Both of those terms will work. Okay, so in the supermarket, because it's a supermarket, it's very big, there are different sections of the store or areas of the store. So when you walk in, you might walk to the bakery, and the bakery is where you're going to find your baked goods, bread, muffins, cakes, those kinds of things. You might walk over to the deli counter where you can get your your meats and cheeses, right? Or meats, I'm sorry. Uh, like these guys right here, and they'll slice those for you. You might go to the produce section where you find fresh vegetables and fruits. Or you might go to the dairy. And the dairy section in most supermarkets, it focuses on milk, yogurt, um, and the cheeses that are over there are usually in, in bags or in some kind of container, right? So you'll see that as well, but that's in the dairy section. Butter as well, I'm sorry, butter would be over there as well, so dairy, different dairy products. So those are different areas within the store. Now, when you're shopping in the store, you might take a variety of actions. You have to do things, right? You are shopping, that is an action, to shop, a verb. The first thing you might do is compare two items. So if you're talking about produce, like an apple and an orange, which we see up in the corner over there, you might look at each one of them, right? You want to pick the best one before you take it. So you're going to compare first. You're going to look at your different options. Then you're going to weigh your produce a lot of the time, right? You want to see how much you have because that's how much you're going to pay. So you put them on the scale right here. So you weigh your items on a scale. Then you can take them to the checkout or the self-check, right? This is a noun and a verb. We discussed this in the shopping lesson as well. So to checkout means to actually go and scan and pay for your items. And then when you're done checking out, you're going to take your receipt. The receipt right here, the list of everything that you purchased, tells you how much you bought. It's usually pretty important to check your receipt to make sure you weren't overcharged. I like to do that. Now, we have different food categories as well. You can get fresh food, right? So up there, it uh, looks like we have some tomatoes, some cucumbers and different things. You have frozen food. So in the frozen food section, uh, there'll be big freezers. This is where they keep all the cold goods that have to be kept cold, right? So we've got some corn here and some asparagus uh, that are frozen. You can have canned foods, like cans of beans and peas, right? So we have that down there. And then dried foods, things like nuts, and rice, uh, beans might be included in dried foods as well. So different types of food, food categories. Okay, now that we've covered all of that vocabulary, I'm going to let you guys put these vocabulary terms into the correct box, all right? So if you look at the terms down here in the word bank, some of them are sections in the store, some of them are food categories, and some of them are actions you might take while you are shopping. So pause the video, take a moment, and see if you can fill in the blanks here. All right, go ahead. All right, how'd we do? Let's check it out. Sections in the store, produce, the deli, the dairy section, and the bakery. Great job. Food categories, we have canned foods, 
frozen foods, dried foods, and fresh foods. And then finally, a few actions you might take. Compare. You compare different items to choose the, the correct one. You weigh your items to see how much you'll have to pay. And finally, you check out. You go and you to the checkout and you pay for your items uh, and take them home with you. Great job. Well, I hope you got all of those. If you didn't, go back and try again, review the vocabulary, and uh, we'll see if you can get it next time. So now that we've done that, I'd like you to put some actions in the correct order. We've actually talked about sequence of actions, order of actions in another video. So I'd like you to try that right now. Um, if you were to go shopping, which of these would you do first and which would you do last? So put those in order. Pause the video. I'll give you a moment. Here we go. Well, first, you should compare. So we're comparing produce right there. Then we're going to weigh our produce to see how much we pay. Then we're going to check out at the self-checkout here. And then finally, very important, take your receipt to make sure you weren't overcharged. All right, that's very, very important. I always like to check my receipt. Okay, this is where it gets a little more difficult. We're going to talk about some grammar right now. Specifically, we're going to talk about countable and non-countable nouns. What does that mean? Well, a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. We've covered that before. And that is the individual, sorry, countable nouns are the individual people, places, or things that we can count, right? A non-countable noun, these are not individual person, places, or things, so they cannot be counted by themselves. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take apples. You can have one apple, you can have two apples, you can have three apples, right? These are countable, so each one has a number, right? So we have one apple, then we have two, then we have three, a countable noun. And a lot of things are like this. One pen, two pens, right? That would work. Um, but then you have your non-countable nouns, like bread, right? This is a tricky one. So you wouldn't say two breads, right? That would be incorrect. We don't say two breads. Instead, we have to put a countable word in front of the word bread. What do I mean by that? Well, loaves of bread would work. So we would say two loaves of bread. You could also say two slices of bread or two pieces of bread. All of those would make sense, but we don't say two breads. Uh, and there are a lot more examples of this. So we're going to try it out right now, okay? So this is a little countable noun practice. So I have some items over here on the left-hand side. We have some cereal, some breakfast cereal. We have a hot dog, and we have some cheese, right? So I want to know which of these items is countable and which is not countable. And then, knowing that, how do we count it, right? How do we do it? So pause the video and try this on your own. You can use the examples that I gave on the previous slide and tell me, is it countable or uncountable? And then how do you count it? Pause the video, go ahead. Here we go. For cereal, that is non-countable. You don't say one cereal, two cereals. Instead, you would say I'd like a bowl of cereal, like we have here, one bowl of cereal, or two bowls of cereal. Or you might want a whole box of cereal. So you say one box of cereal or two boxes of cereal. A hot dog is countable. That's great. So you can have one hot dog, two hot dogs, 20 hot dogs if you'd like, if you're very hungry. And then finally, cheese. This one is pretty tough because it's non-countable as well. You would have to say a piece of cheese or a block of cheese, or even a slice of cheese. All those things would make sense. Those are the countable words in front of cheese, okay? Let's try it one more time. Three new items. We have rice, orange, coffee. Countable or non-countable? And how do we count it? Pause the video and try this on your own. Here we go. Rice, it's non-countable. Right? You would say a grain of rice, but I doubt you just want one grain of rice. That's really not going to fill you up. So you might ask for one bag of rice or a bowl of rice. Right? All those make sense. Orange, that's countable. Just like apples that we saw before, one orange, two oranges, three oranges. 
And then finally, coffee. Had an argument with somebody about this one today. Uh, coffee is actually non-countable. And you hear people use this incorrectly quite a bit. Sometimes people say one coffee or two coffees, but really it should be one cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, or if it's a bag of coffee, or a jar of coffee, comes in a lot of different ways, but really it shouldn't be one coffee, two coffees. Uh, that's gonna be a non-countable verb. Okay, well I hope you got all these. I know they're tricky. There's a lot of these out there. Um, so just think, what is countable, what's non-countable when you go to the store, um, and go back and practice these if you need to. Thank you so much for watching. It's been great. Check back soon. We're going to have more videos up. Uh, bye for now.